All right, welcome every one of you to the sixth edition of this series, Arithmetic of Finance. I, I am happy to hear from some of you how this video has been helping you guys in, of, in improving your uh, skills in thinking and reasoning mathematics problem. All right, so in the fifth edition, we look, uh, fifth episode, we looked at um, depreciation problems and inflation problems and growth. Okay, we looked at further problems on, on those stuff. All right, so in this episode, we want to focus on installment and higher purchase and of course look at annuity. Okay, that's what uh, our focus is going to be on this episode. So please pay maximum attention and of course ask questions where necessary. All right, so let's quickly go to the classroom and see what we have there right away. Okay, because I will need a lot of time to explain annuity, so I'll be a bit fast in installment and higher purchase since it's something that is very primary and uh, with primary school elemental knowledge you can be able to solve problems on that. Okay, what's an installment? Installments is uh, actually bit by bit payment of uh, goods and services. All right, and usually it takes place um, in, uh, in equal separate parts. Okay, when I say usually, that does not mean that it cannot take place in uh, on equal parts. All right, but what we normally see in most calculations when it has to do with mathematics problem is that most often uh, instrumental questions come in uh, equal remittance, okay? When you are paying bit by bit, so it comes in equal uh, separate parts. All right, so why higher purchase is a type of agreement between a seller and a buyer, okay, where the property is given to the buyer for uh, him or her to generate a particular amount for the seller before the property is not legally the buyer's own. Okay, that is higher purchase. Under higher purchase, the the buyer has little or no money in higher purchase. It means that, for instance, I this this particular scenario is actually seen in you know among business people. Okay, especially when you don't trust um, the person you want to give your uh, your let's say somebody bought a vehicle, a car. I want to do a taxi business. And he hired a driver, someone to do the business for him. Okay. Now the person might be cheating on you. The person might go out for work and give excuse that the car spot on the road and police arrested me and all that. Why all those are just all lie? So higher purchase can help to solve that problem. You can also, you can buy a car, okay, and call somebody. I bought this car for one million dollar. Okay. Um, I'm going to sell this car on higher purchase to you. Okay. Take this car. If you make two point five million dollar, the car becomes yours. All right. Now the advantage of this is that the person now don't have money at all, okay? But he want he want he want this car to be his own. So what he does he's going to be very careful. He's going to be sincere. He's going to work extra hard to make sure that he makes two point five million naira even within a short time. Why? Because he he has a target that oh I'm going to be a car owner as soon as I make two point five million naira for the owner of this car, and of course the car become mine. Sometimes it can also be deposit a little money. Maybe the car. The man told him, okay, when you give me two point five million naira, this car becomes yours. All right. So maybe he can deposit uh, five hundred thousand naira, remaining two million naira. Now the other two million naira he can cannot be on higher purchase. So every week or every month or every day, depending on the agreement, he, he cannot be bringing uh, the uh, payment uh, bit by bit. And when he completes the payment, of course, the owner of that car releases the document of the car and he has the car. So that is uh, higher purchase. So sometimes there could be a blend. Of question between uh, installment and higher purchase. That means um, you you deposit something before you deposit a little money, and, or, and of course you now finish up the remaining payment uh, bit by bit instrumentally. So that is all about installment and higher purchase. So they're very easy. Let's see, let's just see briefly one one questions on them, and of course I will not spend the rest of time to explain annuity. All right. So we have example here, example one, and we are told that a guy bought a mobile phone for fifteen thousand naira, at which, of out of which she paid eight thousand naira. If she's allowed to uh, pay the remaining amount in five equal installments, what is the value of each installment? All right. So now the cost of the phone uh, is fifteen thousand naira. So we ask a cost. All right, this is the actual cost of the phone, 15,000 naira. That is the actual cost of this phone that she's buying. 
but he said out of which she paid eight thousand naira. So eight thousand naira is serving as a deposit. All right. So she doesn't have a complete money. All right to pay for everything at once. So she deposits her uh, eight thousand naira. So eight thousand naira is serving as her uh, initial deposit. So what is how much is remaining for her to finish paying? So she still re uh, owing or remaining. Okay, she still owing how much? Of course, it's going to be give us fifteen thousand uh, minus eight thousand, and we are going to have seven thousand. So she's still owing seven thousand. Okay, so her money that she's still owing is equal to seven thousand naira. So this is what she needs to balance off. All right, for the phone that she purchased. Now, what is the question? It says uh, she's making five equal installments. All right, what is the value of each installment? So this is what she's going to pay back after she has deposited 8,000 naira. So she's still owing 7,000 naira. And she is to pay back the 7,000 naira in five equal installments. So of course, so you now say value of installments, so value of each, okay, value of each is going to give us uh, 7,000 naira divided by five. All right, so that is what is going to be. And of course, Five go into seven is one. Uh, remainder two going to twenty is four, and going to the two zero is zero zero. So that means she's going to pay one thousand uh, four hundred naira each for the five equal installments. All right. So that's just all about uh, uh, installments. Okay. So that's how installments are calculated. All right. So sometimes they will give you the amount and ask you to calculate the number of installments and all that. All right. So let's look at some example two. Okay, so in example two, here is the question. We are told that a bed is offered for a cash price of 10,500 naira. All right, that is the cash deposit. What does that mean? It means that if you have money to pay for this bed, cash and carry, okay, you pay 10,500 and you carry the bed, it becomes your own. They give you receipt for uh, purchasing the bed. All right. But now in that say, but can be bought or higher purchase with a down payment. A down payment is actually a deposit, all right. Perhaps you don't have any, you don't have the complete money, just as I've explained before. You don't have the complete money to pay for everything, so you can do a down payment of 2500 naira and 20 monthly installments of 815 naira. Now, one thing with uh, uh, installments or whatever or higher purchase is that uh, the uh, the owner, the seller end up benefiting all right sometimes it's in land they will tell you uh come and own a property come and buy a land uh, for one million naira and all that if you have cash you pay one million naira the land becomes yours but sometimes you know some people don't have one million naira to pay me they can say okay you can even be paying fifty fifty thousand every month all right but you are going to pay it uh instead of uh, paying one million you're going to pay it in 36 months now by doing so you're going to pay more than your source have paid initially if you have paid cash so everything that has advantage has disadvantage the disadvantage is that you will pay more than you could have paid before why the advantage is that you don't have one million naira cash but i'm paying bit by bit so that can also allow you to be able to own a property so if back to the question so uh if she if the person offers ten thousand five hundred naira cash then the person is giving a receipt for the bed but if you don't have ten thousand five hundred naira cash maybe a poor a poor man it can, you can also buy it on higher purchase with a down payment of two thousand five hundred then after you pay two thousand five hundred then i say and twenty monthly installment of eight hundred and uh, fifty naira all right so that means you're going to every month you pay eight hundred and fifty naira for twenty months now the question is calculate the total higher purchase price all right, that is the first question. Calculate total higher purchase price. The total higher purchase price. Of course, we know that. Uh, so uh, let's calculate our first question. All right, so the total higher purchase price is going to give us deposit plus total installment. So, first of all, now say uh, total installment. So the total installment is going to give us uh, 20 multiplied by each installment is 850 naira. So what do we have? We have 20 times 850 and of course it's going to give us 17,000 naira. So total installment is going to give us 
17,000 uh, Naira. So that is the total installment. So that implies that total higher purchase, okay, the total higher purchase now that the person is buying uh, the bed, since the person cannot pay cash, will not be equal to uh, deposit, all right, depot, all right, plus installments. Okay, installments in plural, all of them. So the deposit was 2,500. So we have 2,500 plus 17,000 uh, Naira. So the total higher purchase price now, just as I explained, is going to now give us 19,500 Naira. So do you see that that is the disadvantage of paying for higher purchase? All right, because you pay more. Okay, on it's an advantage for the seller because the seller is going to make more money. But it's also a disadvantage for the seller in the sense that the seller don't get his or her money in bulk immediately. So if he or she needs to go back to the market to buy another goods, she cannot go back to the market immediately because the money is not complete. So it has advantage and disadvantage on both the buyer and the seller. All right, so that is that on question A. Then the next question says the amount borrowed. Now, what is the amount borrowed? The amount borrowed is actually the cash price minus the deposit price. All right, that is the amount borrowed. That means the, that is the amount that the person that is buying is borrowed. All right, because actually you are supposed to have paid for ten thousand five hundred naira, but you deposited two thousand five hundred naira. That's what you uh, deposited to the person. So it means that they owe the only person uh, some amount of money. But because they owe the person an amount of money, the person now conditioned you. So you are not at the mercy of the person. That's why the person now condition you to not pay 850 naira monthly for 20 months. Because you cannot pay 8,000 immediately. Alright? So that is why they now condition you. And that is why you now end up paying uh, for this bed you know, at this price of 13,500. So question B. Um, uh, borrow demand. Alright? So it might interest you to also know that this is a past wire question. Borrow amount is equals to um, the cash price which is 10,500 minus uh, the deposit which is 2,500 and of course we are going to have it as 8,000 naira that is the borrowed amount all right so this is the borrowed amount that the, that the buyer is owing or borrowed from kind of from the seller not so that is the amount the person is owing actually, but they call it borrowed in this question. All right, so please take note of that. They didn't, they didn't give the person 8,000, but you are owing the seller 8,000. That's why it's called a borrowed amount. Okay, then the next question says the amount saved by paying cash. Now, what is the amount you save by paying cash? Remember that you can either pay cash, okay, of 10,500 naira, or you pay for deposit and pay higher, uh, and not pay installments. A pay for deposit of 2500 and I pay installment of 850 naira 20 times, which of course will total to 19,500 for buying it. So, buying a higher purchase is 19,500, but when you pay cash, you pay 10,500. So, how much do you save? Is what they're asking you. So, that's question C. Of course, amount saved. So, that's why I say this uh, section is a bit easy. So, I won't spend much time. I will go to annuity and spend the time explaining annuity. So amount saved is equal to uh, 19,000, the difference, 19,500 minus 10,500. That is the amount saved. Okay? And of course, when you do this, you're going to have 9,000 naira. So if you, if you pay for the cash and carry uh, price, which is 10,500 naira, you will save yourself the headache of 9,000 naira. But just say you don't have cash and carry, you don't have the cash of 10,500 naira and all that. You just have 850 naira, that's what you can afford because, you're, because of the standard of living. Okay? Of course, you end up paying extra 9,000 naira, which is almost buying that particular goods at a double price. So, this is uh, just all about uh, higher purchase and installment. So, their questions can, can be different ways they come, but it's as, just as simple as this. Alright, question 3. A man borrowed a thousand naira and agrees to repay it with an interest of 140 naira in 12 monthly installments. If each installment is less than the preceding installment by 10 naira, what was his first installment? All right, so if you look at this question, it will 
uh, remind you what I said initially when I introduced this topic uh, about installment, that the normal installment, the regular installment is the one that, you know, you pay bit by bit, but it's equal bit by bit. But uh, however, I stress the fact that that does not mean that you cannot see questions that the installment will be, you know, a different amount. All right. And of course, this is a, this is a typical example of such illustration. So the, the man borrowed a thousand naira and he's going to uh, pay an interest of 140 naira. It means that he's now returning a total of what? 1,140 naira. So uh, the total money to return, okay, is going to give us 1,000 plus 140. And that is going to give us 1,140 naira. That is the money the man is to return. We are told in 12 monthly installment, but there's a problem here. Assuming that the, uh, the they say 12 uh, equal monthly installments, of course, we're gonna divide this by 12 to know the amount of each. That would have solved our problem. But this question uh, is now a little bit difficult because the installments are not the same. They say if each installment is less than the preceding installment by 10 Naira, what was his first installment? So we can say, uh, let uh, the first installment, let the first be letter A, all right? So if the first installment is letter A, that means he paid A. Remember, he's going to pay it for 12 months, all right? And by the end of 12 months, he will complete paying this amount of money. Okay, so if the first installment is A, that means plus the second installment, all right, uh, we are told that it is, uh, the second one is going to be less than the preceding one. I mean, the preceding one is A, which came, which came first. All right, the second one will now become uh, uh, A minus 10. All right, this one is going to become A minus 10. All right, now plus the third one, okay, the third one is also going to be less than, it's going to be uh, less than 10 by this one. From this one, it's going to become plus A minus. Now, when you say minus 10 minus, they're going to have minus 20. It's going to give you A minus 20. All right? And so on and so forth till you reach uh, the 12th one. Already, I am seeing a pattern here. Okay? I'm already seeing a pattern here till we reach what? What are we going to reach? Well, keep on adding till we reach our total money we want to repay back, which is. 1,140 naira. I am already seeing a pattern here. Okay. Now, somebody may want to follow this pattern and, and uh, add up and, of course, find your aid. That would be lovely. All right. If you add this, the first one, second one, third one, you, you find for the fourth one, fifth one, sixth one, seventh one, to the fourteenth one, I mean, to the twelfth one. Okay. But that will take a lot of time because, especially when, assuming it was, what of it was uh, about, it is five, you know, uh, monthly installment. Will you keep on doing it like that? No, of course, you will not do that. Even if you want to do that, you may get discouraged and leave the question. So, but if you observe very well, there's a pattern that I've informed. This is some of an AP, all right? Because the first time is A, and of course, there is a change in each of the other terms by a difference of minus 10, okay? Because say the, uh, the second one is, going to, is less than the first one by 10. It means that the first one is actually bigger than the second one. When you do A, which is the first one, minus the second one, which is A minus 10D, you're going to have A minus A is zero. You're going to have A minus A plus 10. Minus times minus is plus. A cancel A, you have 10. So actually, the first one is bigger than the second one. That's why you're having 10. But we use, but that is not the common difference, remember? That's not the definition of our common difference. Our common difference is actually second one minus first one. So when you do second one minus first one, you will have minus 10. So our D, is equals to minus 10. That's our common difference. All right. When you do also a minus 20 minus a minus 10, you're going to also have minus 10. All right. Good. You can also look at it. Let me also explain that a minus 20 minus into a minus 10. Okay. A minus 20 expand the minus a minus times minus is plus plus 10. So what do you have? A cancel a minus 20 plus 10 is equal to minus 10. So that's our common difference here. So take note. Now we have our first term. We don't know our first term A, but we have a common difference A. But we have recognized that this is sum of an AP, all right? Because the common difference is, is, is constant. So SN, uh, sum of an AP is N over 2, all right, into 
uh, uh, two A plus N minus one D. Okay, that is it. We don't know the last term, so we are using the expanded formula. And of course, our n is 12, so we are, our n is equal to 12 because we want to make 12 monthly installments. So that implies that our SN, the total sum, is going to give us this amount that 1140, all right, is equal to 12 divided by 2 into 2a. We don't know the first term. Uh, 12, 12 minus 1, 12 minus 1 multiply by minus 10. All right, so when you put our D equals to minus 10, and when we simplify, of course, I want to have 1140 equals to 6 into 2A. 12 minus 1 is 11 times minus 10. We'll have minus 110. If we detach 6 from the bracket by dividing both sides by 6, we are going to have 190 is equals to 2A minus 10. Uh, minus 110. Okay, if this uh, 110 go over the air, I want to have 190 plus 110 equals to 2A. All right, that will give us 300. If you add 300, is equals to 2A. Dividing both sides by A, therefore, the first installment is equals to 150 naira. That is the first installment that. Uh, the man is going to pay. All right, so uh, I'm sure you have seen how uh, different questions can come. Please have a, a, an open mind, all right? Learn to think outside the box. Uh, box. Also learn to you know, be confident in yourself that you can do it. The greatest challenge to learning mathematics is fear. When you see a question, and of course, you just quickly give up because of its appearance. Don't be afraid. Have self-confidence. Always have a mindset that I can do it. All right. Once that mindset is here, of course, you always figure out a way to do uh, that or to solve that particular question. All right. So we are going to stop at this uh, point uh, uh, because uh, I want to spend uh, quality time in explaining annuity. All right. So I'm going to divide this episode, this episode six now, into two uh, different parts. 6A and of course episode 6B. So in episode 6B, I want to be handling annuity. I want to concentrate the time specialized in handling the annuity in episode 6B. Thank you very much for uh, viewing and also watching. If you have learned something from this video, please do recommend this video to somebody else who might need a resource material in learning mathematics. Also, before you leave, do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Thank you. See you in episode seven. It is a goodbye from me.